It was here at Padley you, where Nicholas Garlick and Robert Ludlam were arrested at the manor house which was the home of John Fitzherbert on the 12th of July 1588. They were taken to Derby Jail where they were charged together as having come into England as Catholic priests. Just like you did, Father Bush. <laughs> they were convicted of treason on the 23rd of July 1588. 1588 the Spanish Armada was being prepared and these two priests, um, Nicholas Garlick and Robert Ludlam, came here. Um, they were both local men. Um, Nicholas Garlick had been the head teacher of a school in Tunswell, which is about 10 miles away, and Robert Ludlam had been born in Sheffield. So they knew the area and they were known. Um, and it seemed to be they were liked as well because they, you know, I think a lot of people knew they were around. Um, unfortunately, um, John's son Thomas had been in prison in Derby and it seems that he'd perhaps been lent on by uh, Queen Elizabeth's chief spy catcher whose name was Topcliffe, who kept a torture chamber in his house. He was a psychopath really, I think. And maybe he frightened Thomas, um, threatened him. Um, because it's said that Thomas actually betrayed the fact that the priests were, there, were here on that night. And they raided um, the, the house and found the priests. We don't know where they were. Mary Queen of Scots, had been who was a Catholic, had been driven out of Scotland and imprisoned in England for 19 years. A lot of it in this area. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Orders, of course, preserve the faith in time of great difficulty in the face of death. And we too, in a sense, can become martyrs. We may never face physical death, but we can face other difficulties that we might require the mind or the spirit of a martyr. We may have to, exam example, be faced with the possibility of a religious freedom taken from us or greatly reduced. We will have to speak up for that. We have to take a stand, which the holy martyrs did. They took the stand for the faith. They took the, fa the stand for Jesus Christ. And that is all important. And we may face in the days ahead many difficulties. But again, with the spirit of the martyrs, the intercession of the martyrs, and our faith in God, we'll certainly persevere. Reminded here in the gospel today that sometimes we can become very indifferent. We can avoid those that are uncomfortable for us, we might say, and we take another side of the road. And yet there are always those who, the least expected, take pity and take compassion. And we have to be people of compassion, we have to be people of compassion, and people that reach out to others. Even though they may dip, be different from us, they might be the low caste of society as it is, we must reach out to them, we must never look down upon them, always treat them with respect. And as Jesus said, the answer was to love God with all our heart, all our strength, our mind, our body, and the second we like it to love our neighbor. This Samaritan, who was an outcast, who was a complete outcast, this Samaritan took the time. He paid for the man's keep. He, nourished, he uh, nurtured him, and he told the innkeeper, if, you, if, you owe, if he owes anything more, I will pay you on my return. And so too, we must be like the Samaritan. <coughs> With eyes raised to heaven, to you, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, you said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.